it is amazing to look at this. Now this is this is tipping point. It it has it has been reached. The occupation of the Wisconsin Capitol continues for a third day, and Richard Trumka, doing his best impersonation of the Muslim Brotherhood, is showing up in Madison himself today at twelve noon. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, have uh, let me ask you some questions. Have any of you heard how poorly paid Wisconsin teachers are? Why haven't we heard that? That's right, because they're not poorly paid. If the Wisconsin teachers are poorly paid, the media would be plastering their salaries and benefit schedules and pension plans all across TV news and the front page of every newspaper. But they aren't doing that because the Wisconsin public sector salaries are way out of line compared to most people in the private sector. They cannot paint pictures of hardship. Wisconsin has more than 300, now listen to this, Wisconsin has more than 300,000 public sector employees. Now reportedly many of them, such as teachers in Madison, get health care benefits worth more than $22,000 a year. Free, quote unquote, free, meaning they don't pay much for it. And that's one of the changes that the governor wants to implement. Have them pay a little bit of their own health care benefit. 300,000 public sector employees, many of them teachers, health care benefits worth more than $22,000 a year. You do the math. Just health care benefits, $22,000 times 300,000. Speaking of the media, where are all the headlines about the protesters in Wisconsin throwing a temper tantrum? We always hear about Tea Party temper tantrums, voter temper tantrums. Here we have one. We have a genuine, petulant, immature, childish bunch of bottom feeder freeloaders acting in a temper tantrum. The unions in Washington are hiding behind the children. The unions in Wisconsin are hiding behind the children. They're using children as human shields. Just like leftists and terrorists always do. Well, who, how else would you describe this? I have to admit, I've seen all these demonstrators and the kind of people involved. Now this, I don't really hope this, but I'm, I'm saying this to make a point. What would happen if the unions win and Governor Walker's reforms get defeated? Then the unions won't be protected from layoffs, as Mr. Walker has promised. Look at... They have a balanced budget amendment that they have to abide by in the state of Wisconsin. If they don't get this, if this deal goes down, there are going to be a lot of these people laid off rather than kept on the job having to pay a little bit for their benefits. A lot of these people are out screaming in Madison will lose their jobs if they win. There will be layoffs. And Walker's not backing down. We got the audio sound bites coming up. Have you heard Walker blame his predecessor? Have you heard Walker talk about the rotten situation he inherited? Like our boy child president Barack Obama always does. Scott Walker's predecessor, the previous governor, left him a $3.6 billion budget deficit. Obama would be blaming his predecessor all day long in every public statement that he made. And the media would show Obama nothing but sympathy. And would join the chorus. You know, oh, how woe is Obama. Oh, how woe is Scott Walker. Well, the difference is Walker's a Republican. He doesn't have time to blame anybody. He's got to fix it. And the media would not be on his side anyway.